It's spring, the cross country race season is looming. I'm gonna be racing this year, so I've got myself a new bike. So here she is, the Canyon Exceed CFR. Oh, it looks so pretty. I'm so excited to race it. And although it looks World Cup ready, here's all the reasons why I won't be setting this up like a World Cup pro. Drop stems, slammed stems, dropper posts, 120 mil full suspension bikes. All of these things are pretty commonplace on the UCI XC World Cup circuit and they're creeping their way into the mass market of cross country bikes too. Should we be copying these trends or should we be leaving these to the pros? stems of 50 millimeters to about 90 millimeters long slammed with a minus five to minus 20 degree drop is pretty commonplace on the world cup circuit right now now just to explain what i mean by that slammed stems mean that the stem is in its lowest position so it's the furthest down on the steerer tube as close to the frame as possible and a minus five to minus 20 degree drop means that the stem actually points down at either a five to 20 degrees from level. So it offers a lower position on the front. Nino Scherter, all time XC legend, runs a one piece stem and bar cockpit similar to mine, but with a virtual stem length of 90 millimeters and a drop of minus 40 degrees. So why are the pros doing this? Well, generally it offers them a more powerful position when pushing down through the pedals, uh, but generally it's more efficient when climbing. You see, it puts you in a more centered position when the bike is pointing upwards, up a climb. It also puts weight on the front, which means it gives more traction and grip on that front wheel. And if climbs get completely steep, then it means you won't feel like you're falling off the back and you won't get that wandering front wheel feel. It also means that you'll still have a lot of control over the front wheel when you're climbing through technical climbs. Well, that all sounds great. So why shouldn't we copy that? Well, many people who don't have this as their full-time job won't have the flexibility in their back or their hips to maintain a position that low on the front for an hour and a half race. In fact, if you're straining to reach your bars, you may strain your back, which obviously risks injury, but it will also fatigue you over that hour and a half's race, which means you won't be powerful over that period of time. But also, if you're reaching with your back and your hips are starting to tilt, then you won't actually be in the most powerful position for pushing down on the pedals anyway. Your best chances is to make sure that your hips are level and that you're down low enough that you're not actually moving those hips forward. So my Exceed is running the Canyon CPOA XE cockpit, which has a virtual drop of minus 17 degrees, which seems quite aggressive on the scale of things. But as you can see, my leg length is actually quite uh, short. It's only 79 centimeters, uh, which means that my bars on my saddle are almost level. So the point is it's all relative. If you have longer legs, then that drop could be quite low. Uh, if you have short legs like myself, then it might give you a neutral position. And I would recommend starting in a neutral position. And what I mean by that is that your saddle height and your handlebar height from the ground are both around about the same height. And then you can start to experiment with dropping it. Now, I used to race World Cups uh, about five or six years ago, and I was a lot fitter, a lot stronger, and a lot more flexible back then. So I'm gonna be starting this season 
with a neutral position and I'm going to be moving this stem down about five millimeters at a time just to see if my my hips and my back can take that. I'll be doing it gradually and I recommend you doing the same. Drop it by five mil at a time and go and ride it for at least a week gently. Make sure that there's no pain, no injuries before going any further. Dropper posts are great inventions and we're seeing them on the World Cup circuit more and more. And I wouldn't spec a trail bike or an enduro bike without one, but as you can see, I'm kind of on the fence for XC. So why are pros running droppers on cross country circuits? Well, the World Cup scene is getting pretty technical. Descents are becoming really rocky. There are big drop offs and sometimes gap jumps. Now with pros having typically lower dropped front cockpits, then having a saddle that can also drop out of the way just allows a rider to move around freely. It allows the bike to move around freely. It gives you more leg room to pump the bike and to work the bike when things get technical. Nino Scherter is famously not a dropper post fan, but he will run one when it gets muddy. So it's a sure sign that the droppers are useful when the going gets tough. But I think we can all agree Nino is talented enough to descend without one. So why shouldn't you run a dropper post? Well, it's not a case of you shouldn't, but there's a few things to consider, and that is weight, cost, and effort. So the cost of a dropper could add a few hundred pounds to your overall build. It can also add a few hundred grams to the overall weight of your bike. And consider that a dropper post needs to be activated with you sitting on the saddle and pushing it down. It's been said that an XC rider can activate their dropper nearly a hundred times during a World Cup race. Can you imagine doing a hundred squats during an hour and a half sprinting session? It wasn't that long ago that 80 to 100 mil hardtails were commonplace. In fact, probably only about six years ago. And now we're seeing 120 mil full suspension bikes. Why is that? Well, I think it's a bit like the dropper post argument in that riders are trying to keep up with those ever extreme World Cup courses. And a 120 mil full suspension bike is very good on technical descents. So do we need 120 mil full SAS race bikes? Well, if you're the sort of person who does XC races and maybe the occasional marathon race and the occasional down country epic at the weekend, then perhaps it's the right bike for you to have one quiver to do all of those subjects. But if you just want a pure race bike, just for pure cross country, then consider whether your existing bike leaves you out of depth. If you have a 100 mil hardtail like this or a 100 mil full susser, are you getting out of your depth on your current courses? Do you think your regional or your national events demand a bit more of you on your bike? If not, then maybe you don't need a new bike. So why wouldn't we want 120 mil full suspension bikes? Well, the new technology will hold a slightly higher price tag for a while. But even if you can afford that, just consider that much like when we introduced 29ers, the geometry is going to be slightly different to what you're used to. You might find that the front end is a little higher because with the longer travel, you might have a longer axle to crown length. So it might require a bit of fiddling to get your usual body position. Also consider that 120 mil suspension might be a little bit heavier. Certainly if they specced with something like a Fox 34 instead of a Fox 32 or a SID, then you could potentially be adding 100 or 200 grams to your race bike, which is not a problem, but it's definitely one to consider if you are a weight weenie.
Speaking of 120mm full sussers, where did all the hardtails go? Now, it wasn't so long ago that most World Cup racers were on hardtails. Uh, and as you can see, I don't think hardtails are dead just yet. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think full sussers are faster. And back when I raced a World Cup in 2016, I was on a full sus bike and I think I was outperforming competitors that were usually quicker than me. Uh, but you do have to be strong enough to push it. Um, this Exceed CFR is about two pounds, nearly one kilo lighter than its equivalent Canyon Lux World Cup full sus bike. Uh, now, as I'm not as fit these days, I think actually having a lighter bike is going to be more advantageous to me at my weakest point, which is climbing. Uh, also consider that the hardtail is about a thousand pounds cheaper than the full sus. So if you can handle a hardtail on the courses you'll be racing, why not save yourself some money and uh, well, look cool while you're doing it. So what do you think? Have you tried a pro setup? Have you tried a slam stem before? Are you on a 120mm full susser for racing? Let me know down in the comments below and share your experiences of the pro setup. And also let me know what cross-country tech you want to see in the future. <laughs>